This is part one of a six part series that I'm going to be putting together about the bugs that I find in my backyard. Bugs, 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 bugs. Hello internet, it's your old pal down in the well and today we're gonna talk about slugs. Slugs! Spring has sprung and summer is on its way out the door. And if you're anything like me, you've spent a lot of time outside attempting to get plants to grow. I've discovered that if I go out around 10 p.m. every night, I see these little bastards munching on my great new crops. Hey man, I can kill the plants on my own. I don't need help from some gooey gastropod. Am I right? So, the yard is infested with slugs, and I know what you're thinking. Hey man, can you describe the basic taxonomy, anatomy, and common depictions of slugs in popular culture? Yes, I can! Today is your lucky day! Taxonomy. Kingdom, animalia, that's right, these things are animals. I know they look like gooey little aliens, and look, truth be told, they could be gooey little aliens. I can't tell you they're not gonna be aliens. I'm not an expert on aliens, okay? But for today's purposes, we're gonna be considering them animals, not plants, not aliens. They're animals. Phylum mollusca. Slugs are a member of one of the largest phylums that we know, second only to arthropods. And while most mollusks happen to be aquatic, many slugs are terrestrial, which means they're found right here on land. Quick little Latin lesson for you, terra is Latin for earth, ground, land. Ta-da! Gastropoda. Slugs, snails, limpets, there are absolutely tons of these things out there. Over 500 species have been identified. The word gastropod is derived from the Greek phrase that roughly translates into stomach foot. Stomach foot. Sounds gross, right? It is! That was basic taxonomy. Further describing these creatures gets a little bit tricky. Full disclosure, I scoured the internet looking for clues on how to properly identify genus species of these slugs in my backyard. And while I got close, I will warn you, there are so many slugs out there and they all look so, so similar. I was able to narrow it down. I'm not able to tell you definitively what genus and species these slugs are, so any of you armchair entomologists out there want to help me out, I'll give you more details. But not now, we're moving on. Basic slug anatomy. The slug is broken down into three primary body components. The head, which seems obvious, the mantle, and the tail. I know it looks like one long tail, with another tail here, and well, I, here I guess too, and, and a couple small tails here, but trust me, head, mantle, tail. These alien looking guys up here are called ocular tentacles, and they hold the eyes. And these ones here are sensory tentacles that hold the uh, sensors. This scary gaping hole over here is called the pneumostome or breathing pore and that's where all the respiration happens. There's a tiny little genital pore up here where all the reproductive stuff happens. And then this is the sole of the foot, the stomach foot. See, it's gross, isn't it? Now keep in mind, this is just one slug in my garden in my little corner of the world. There are dozens of slugs that look exactly like this and then so many more that don't look anything like this. Terrestrial slugs alone can display a huge variety of colors. Orange, white, boring slimy brown. Sizes ranging from only a few millimeters to over 20 centimeters, which is eight inches for all my non-imperial folks out there. This guy right here is called Limax Maximus, which translates to biggest slug. Can you believe it? Which is oddly enough, not the biggest slug, but his cousin is Limax Cinero Nigera. And we have no time to get into how crazy sea slugs can get. Holy moly, look at that diversity. Maybe we'll do a future episode on sea slugs. I don't know. So what's the big deal? Well, I'll tell you what the big deal is. These things are major pests and many happen to be invasive species. Their primary food source is the delicious young leaves and fruit that you're out here trying so hard to grow. Friggin' slug eating all my new plants. Now this isn't to say that slugs are completely useless. In fact, contrary to the frustration that they've caused 
gardeners, and farmers for generations, slugs play an important role in our ecosystem by breaking down organic material into nutrients that then get recycled into the soil. Slugs also happen to be a primary food source for many mammals, birds, insects, reptiles, and so if you remove slugs from the food chain, you might save a little wear and tear on your lettuce leaves, but you're removing a crucial component of the environment that all these other animals rely on. See, it's complicated, isn't it? Oh, here we go, some quick slug facts. Slugs are synchronous hermaphrodites, which means they have both female and male reproductive organs. They seek out a mate under the cover of darkness, they intertwine, and then they fertilize each other's eggs. Double the eggs, double the slugs! Not to mention, some slugs can fertilize their own eggs, which just adds an extra level of dullness to an already pleasureless existence. Boring! Inside a slug's mouth is something called a radula, a tongue-like organ covered in hundreds of tiny sandpaper-like denticles. These tooth-like bristles that are used for shredding and devouring everything in your garden. Take a close-up look at that! Nightmare fuel, huh? You can usually find evidence that slugs have been in your area by following their little gooey slimy trails. The slime is made up mostly of mucus, water, and salts. The slime allows them to glide over rough terrain with their soft, fleshy bodies. Their stomach foot, still gross. Also, scientists are studying the proteins found in slug slime in order to develop potential antiviral, antifungal, and antibacterial properties. Okay, neat. So at this point, you might be saying, hey dude, I've never seen a slug in my backyard. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, that may be true, but perhaps you've seen them on the big screen? You would have if you've ever seen the movie Slugs, which came out in 1988. Slugs. First, they got into the water system. Now, they'll get into your system. Oh my god! Boy, oh boy, is this movie B.A. We're dealing with a mutant form of slug here, a kind that eats meat. Actually, it's not that bad. Three out of six legs would recommend to my friends. But it gets better if a schlocky horror film about flesh-eating slugs wasn't enough to wet your palate. Yummy! This film was based on a best-selling 200-page novel of the same name from 1982, Slugs. This book sold over 500,000 copies. Can you believe it? 500,000 copies of Slugs? What on earth were people thinking in 1982? You never heard of it? No kidding, people say it's absolutely terrible, but you're just gonna have to take my word for it because I personally don't read books, well, about fleshing slugs, of course. Unsurprisingly, slugs show up all over the place in sci-fi and fantasy stuff, like these Granite slugs from Star Wars. These are jelly slugs from Harry Potter. And apparently, they're not slugs at all. It's a type of candy. But I don't really know about that because I don't read books about wizards, of course. I do, however, watch cartoons. There were some very charming slugs in the DreamWorks movie Flushed Away that the internet has a fascination with. The television show Futurama has the parasitic brain slugs, and of course, the party animal Slurms Mackenzie alongside all of the other disgusting little slugs that worked in the Slurm factory. Yes, these slugs happen to be aliens, but that is okay, because I like Futurama, I approve. Supposedly there's a really mouthy slug in some movie called Epic that I have not seen or and I have not heard about. You know you're not insulting me, right? You're just grossing me out. You've been warned. Ow! But I'm sure it's very, very good. Then there's this fresh little fella from the movie Monsters Universe. But everybody knows, slugs are not monsters. Unless they're in the movie Slugs, in which case they are flesh-eating monsters. There's a character in the X-Men comics named Maggot who gets nutrients slipped to him from these two gross little slugs. That's what gives him his powers. It's a little strange even for the Mutant series, but uh, I guess that's just the way it goes. If you think about it too long, it's like, technically he's not a mutant at all, it's the slugs that are the mutants. I mean, he's just some guy who has slugs on him, that's weird, but that doesn't make you a mutant, you know? I mean, let's show some respect here. 
In addition to popping up in all sorts of indie comics and web comics on the internet, slugs show up a few times in some timeless Far Side comics by Gary Larson. <laughs> it's a salty lake, get it? Oh sh! I forgot to talk about the salt! Salt kills slugs through osmosis by leaching fluid from their tiny little bodies through their skin. It sounds as bad as it is. Don't do it. Just take my word for it. I told you all about the salt. You don't have to go experience it for yourself. You don't have to experiment. You don't have to put salt on slugs. It's not a nice thing to do. And I told you right here, shame if you go try it now. You don't have to do it. You found out what it does. So that's it. I am sure I've missed some very important stuff. If you want to know more about slugs, go ahead and send me a PM, a DM, an AM, an FM, okay? Leave a comment and I'll do my best to respond. Check back weekly and if you'd like to share this with somebody who may find it interesting, thank you very much. And if I don't see you sooner, I'll see you later.